from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. In March 2011, he was appointed chairman and CEO of the Motion Picture Association, leading the association's efforts to represent the interests of one of the most creative and productive industries in America. I'm honored to welcome the chairman and CEO of the MPAA, Christopher Dodd. Thank you, very, very much. Thank you Michael, very much. Didn't know I was being called on that quickly. I'm Thank you, Michael, for the introduction, and uh, welcome all of you this evening for a wonderful, wonderful evening to celebrate a great American, two great Americans, and their talents and their contributions to our country. And you're in one of the best spaces in the United States of America. Uh, this wonderful building, this wonderful hall. My great friend Jim Billington, a librarian, told me a great story a few years ago when President Bush came in through the library bringing Mikhail Gorbachev with him. And they stood in this very space where you are taking in the sights and the wonderful murals and the columns and the like. And Mikhail Gorbachev looked at President Bush and said, you mean this was done without a czar in that way? So we appreciate this, and this wonderful building. Anyway, I'm delighted to be with all of you. And, uh, and Jim, we thank you at the library. Uh, Jim Billington has been a remarkable leader of this institution. Uh, bringing it to levels that no one even imagined a few years ago. Jim, we thank you immensely for all that you've done. And Michael, I thank you for the introduction. I'm going to be very, very brief here tonight. I'm delighted, Dina, you asked me to be a part of this evening's program, uh, to celebrate your mother and your father. Uh, a remarkable individual. As all of you know, Danny Kaye brought great, great joy uh, to millions and millions of people, not only here in our own country, but all over the world for more than 60 years of contribution on stage, in film, on television, in so many different, uh, so many different venues. Uh, brought so much joy, but also did something else, uh, which we admire immensely. He took his celebrity, his notoriety, his connection with people, regardless of ethnicity or geography, and then he made that contribution uh, to the well-being of children and others of the United Nations. Uh, truly a remarkable individual, not only because of his talents and his ability, but also because he transferred those talents and abilities to try to improve the quality of life of people who would never have the opportunities but for people like him who are out there working every day to see to it that they would have a chance in this world of ours. On June 23, 1987, Danny Kaye and Sylvia, his lovely wife, were invited to the White House by Ronald Reagan to participate in one of the best ceremonies this country can ever provide to anyone. With him that day were Gregory Peck, James Cagney and Sidney Poitier. And they were there to receive the Congressional or the Presidential Medal of Honor, the highest award that our country can give to any individual. And Danny Kaye was the recipient that day, along with those three other individuals, and truly deserving of it. Most people would know in this town that Ronald Reagan and I didn't agree on everything. But boy, do we agree about Danny Kaye getting that award that day. And he deserved it, Adina, immensely for his talents and his ability. So tonight, we thank uh, him. On this centennial, we thank the library for receiving the archives and website that now millions more will be able to enjoy his contribution, as well as Sylvia's, without whom I believe he never would have had the success that he achieved because she was there at every step of the way, making the choices that proved so valuable to him and to the rest of us who enjoyed his wonderful talents and his wonderful abilities. So I'm delighted this evening to have been asked to be a part of this evening. I thank all of you for coming to enjoy this as well. And once again, a great celebratory evening for Danny and Sylvia Kay. Thank you very much, Dean, everybody. Thank you. Please welcome the Children's Choir of Washington.
Welcome the Librarian of Congress, Dr. James Billington. Senator Dodd, Senator Wicker, Congressman Meadows, Congressman Cohen, um, Congressman and Mrs. Micah, and Dina Kay, daughter of Danny Kay and Sylvia Fine, the creative duo whose legacy we're celebrating tonight. Also, a special welcome and thanks to Ed Weidenfeld, trustee of the Kay Foundation, who's very invaluable um, support really has made this evening possible, has made the whole project of the Danny and Sylvia Fine Kay web presentation, as well as tonight's celebrator celebratory event and much else. Now, Danny Kay made on it hardly tell this audience an extraordinary, almost immeasurable impact on American entertainment history. Comedian, actor, singer, dancer, conductor, cook, all kinds of art forms he mastered in the most remarkable way. Um, nearly every artistic genre that we collect in this extraordinary repository of so much of America's cultural and entertainment and, and intellectual creativity, but think of it, Broadway, Variety Theater, vaudeville, film, radio, television, unforgettably funny, touching, entirely original theatrics. From a, a quote that Deanna made in one of her happy reminiscences about this remarkable couple I particularly like, it's by Arthur Rubenstein, the great pianist, who was, a, of course, the gold standard, the platinum standard, I guess we'd say now, in his, his genre. But he said of Danny Kay, who of course had this amazing capacity to make us laugh and to shine in so many different ways, but he said, as with Chaplin, I'm quoting Arthur Rubenstein now, he said, I am not so much amused as I am moved. I mean, a really great entertainer doesn't move you. And whether he's dancing, singing, joking, whatever he's doing, I mean, my, my academic specialty uh, was always in the study of Russia, and I remember reading the Inspector General, uh, a Gogol I particularly loved, but I said, I remember saying at the time, it'd be impossible to translate this. Well, Danny Kay did it, and um, I was with some Russians that I went to it that evening, and he said, how did he possibly translate the untranslatable? And that was because he spoke to the universal that's in all of us. And it's just a remarkable man. Anyhow, remembering um, for leading the way for entertainment, also to engage in philanthropy. Um, first celebrity ambassador to UNICEF, very deeply involved and got other people interested and involved. Conducted orchestras in hundreds of benefit concerts, performed tirelessly for USO um, in um, tours, even in war zones. And of course, Sylvia Fine's talents were equally exceptional. Composed music, uh, wrote lyrics and scripts, produced uh, nearly every genre in entertainment, and was a gifted lecturer. Masterfully managed Kay's career by writing specialty material for him and helping to hone and um, expand his enormous talent and his range of, of achievements. Now, the library is privileged to be the home of the Danny Kay and Sylvia Fine collections. This is approximately 150,000 items, scripts, scores, photographs, correspondence, business papers, which provide the behind the scenes insights into the kind and the field of entertainment. 200 boxes of Sylvia Fine's research in the history of musical comedy, 
which she used for her lectures, which were themselves major events and is, in a sense, a musical comedy library all in itself. What a wonderful collection. It complements other collections from show business that are so richly archived and preserved here. And I might stress the preservation with the great Packard Audiovisual Conservation Center we now have to make sure that this audiovisual world is maintained for the future. Um, something that uh, George Stevens, who you'll hear from a little bit later, is instrumental in, in um, helping uh, the library to um, get started in that business. Anyhow, the K collection uh, does, uh, it, it will go along with the collections just, for instance, of uh, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, Irving Berlin, George and Ira Gershwin, Ella Fitzgerald, um, and Bob Hope. I particularly like the Bob Hope collection because it shows this transition from vaudeville into the new 20th century audiovisual media, but never losing sight of those origins and the richness and variety that exist even within those genres. Anyhow, one of the library's main goals for the past 20 years has been also to digitize and make universally available online the unique primary source materials such as these great collections of American entertainment. And really, the deepening so that we are, even as we laugh, we are moved. We are deeply grateful to the Kay Foundation. Again, I want to stress that again for providing the funding to make this evening possible and to make possible for the Danny and Sylvia Fine Kay Collection also to be moved um, into the digital realm, uh, as we hope to be doing. After this program, we invite you to go upstairs to see selected items from the collection on display, as well as to explore the website um, at several computer terminals that are stationed around the mezzanine up floor. So once again, thank you all for being here. Uh, thank, thanks most especially to the foundation and to the family and to Dina for bringing this marvelous company together tonight to celebrate a true American treasure and a treasure that we hope will be preserved and shared again with future generations. Thank you all once again. Please welcome filmmaker, playwright, founder of the American Film Institute, George Stevens, Jr. Hello. It's wonderful to be able to say a few words to you in this <clears throat> great setting. Um, I think perhaps my distinction uh, on this occasion, I think other than Dina and maybe one or two others present, um, I was cooked for by Danny Kay, uh, which, as you probably know, Danny was a great cook and up in his and Sylvia's house up above Beverly Hills. Um, Danny was, uh, you know, a wonderful man, and for those of us who had the privilege of knowing him, he was, a, you know, a good friend. And of course, he did, as has been described, such great and wonderful public works. Uh, you know, the uniqueness, when you think of the imagination that went into uh, the, the full range of his performances, he was starting on vaudeville and in film and on television, which he dominated for a period of time. And he conducted orchestras. And his talents were just. Uh, prodigious, and I am here to uh, introduce a little collection that will remind us of Danny's gifts. Uh, but I wouldn't want to do it without just remarking, since we are here in the Library of Congress, what an extraordinary resource it is. Uh, Jim has done an amazing job bringing it, I guess, literally into the 21st century. Um, and I just last weekend, I was in Los Angeles 
finishing a film working uh, with my son Michael, and we were it's a film about um, her block, the great political cartoonist whose collection resides here in the Library of Congress. But we needed a still photograph, not specific to her block. And Michael said, I'll get it on the Library of And we went to the Library of Congress website. And there, for all of America, is this amazing collection of photographs uh, that is not only available to look at, but is accessible. So I just thank Jim for the wonderful work you do and what a great resource it is for this country. Please welcome Dina Kay. Wait a minute, this is very ironic because my notes aren't here. And if my father was here, he, the first thing he would say to me is, Dean, because he never called me Dina, tear up your notes. So with no notes, I'm just going to start. Um, watching that reminds me of the old adage, a picture is worth a thousand words. And I would say a moving picture, in this case, needs no words. They were just amazing, amazing people. Um, I don't want to tread in the waters and the treacherous waters of Washington Protocol. So let me just say that I am so glad that maybe I, you know, maybe I'm so glad that each and every one of you is here and taken a part of your evening to spend with us in the House of Billington to dedicate um, the website that has been created with my parents' archives that was the work of so meticulous, so caring. I'm just thrilled that all of you are here. In this year that is, oddly enough, both my parents' centennial. I would like to thank a few people, though. First, Dr. Billington, for your wonderful and warm remarks, and Senator Dodd for just being so warm and personal about my parents, and of course, George. I, will, I want to say that the reason we had um, Chinese food, as George could probably tell you, is that my father cooked Chinese food a lot. So that's why we decided to have Chinese food. So the three of you, thank you so much. And I want to thank my wonderful friend Michael Feinstein and Terence Flannery for coming to perform for us this evening. It couldn't be more special or perfect. This centennial year um, has been a very emotional experience for me. Um, I, I've had the chance to know my parents' work in a way that I really never, you know, I never analyzed their work. And I just have to say I realized how unique they both were and how, um, what perfectionists they both were. Uh, and if I may use that oft-abused term, what geniuses they were. And my goal for the centennial uh, and beyond is that people will feel and experience what you did tonight. I'm not, it's lovely to be honored at a chicken dinner, but I'm really interested that the work is out, the music is out, um, that it's on iTunes, it's on apps, it's on DVDs, um, it's in theaters, and it's on television, and I would just take a moment to thank the entire Centennial team, Scott Morrow, Ed Weidenfeld, and Robert Bader, the PMK team, who have been so wonderful in launching this whole effort. Um, but the fact is, I'm just their daughter. And I know them best as my parents. Uh, my father was really kind of a regular guy. He taught me how to jaywalk in New York. We, <laughs> we would go eat um, fried eggs at this coffee shop that used to be next to the hotel where we lived in New York, and we'd eat fried, e fried eggs. And he'd teach me the deal was you had to get the fried, the yolk in your mouth without breaking. But the most, uh, I think the most wonderful thing about my father was he was concerned about my deciding what my happiness was. And if I had said to him, gee, daddy, I'm going to marry a sheep rancher in the outback, if he really felt I was happy, he would have said, that's great, Dean, I'll bring a Weber barbecue and we'll make rack of lamb. So he was kind of the unconditional loving parent. My mother uh, was very concerned that I get out of Beverly Hills. She didn't consider it a, re a real place. She used to call it the mink-lined nest. And 
or the, emerald, the, the square cut emerald set, she would say. So she did her best to get me out of there. So I didn't spend summers on the beach in Santa Monica. I went to Vermont to camp. I went to New Hampshire to camp. She sent me to live with an Italian family in a very small town where they spoke no English. So I could really, you know, really feel what, what it's like to have to learn to, to, to communicate. And my mother, bless her, um, started the Danny Kay and Sylvia Fine Kay Foundation. And that gave me a real opportunity to, uh, I wouldn't say I would never dream to say follow in my father's footsteps, but at least to carry the mantle that he bore so proudly of helping others. And so the, the projects, in fact, there are two people here tonight, Bonnie Burnham and Peter Ryling, with the Aspen Institute and World Monuments Fund, to whom the foundation has given gifts that's enabled me to be so proud of what helping other people can do. And we've done projects from uh, a women's weaving project in India with a school and a hospital to a pocket park in the oldest Muslim neighborhood of Cairo uh, to the building of jazz at Lincoln Center. And uh, in fact, kind of following in my father's footsteps made me remember how did he make me part of his life? And he didn't bring me presents. So I don't give my godchildren presents. I give them my time. And um, but he did teach me folk songs. So with Michael's permission, I'm going to sing a folk song that he taught me. I don't know what it means, but we sang it together all the time. Ame ame fudi fudi ga sanga, janno me di omukai udeshina, bichi bichi chapu chapu rang rang rang, janno me di omukai udeshina. There's a Japanese translator. I'd love to know what that really what that really meant. So, to the main event of the evening. When my mother told me that she had given all of our archives to the Library of Congress, I was thrilled. Thrilled and proud because their legacy would be given life in the nation's capital and the most prestigious library, in my mind, to, to an American. But bringing all the archives to life was a different story. And I have... Uh, no one to thank more than my beloved friend Ed Weidenfeld for initiating the idea of the website and for the music division of the Library of Congress who have been so diligent and affectionate and caring. And there is an exhibit in the Madison building that for those of you who live in Washington, it's absolutely wonderful. It's a temporary exhibit and I saw it for the first time today. And If you have time, it would be a wonderful thing to see. Um, and my, my profound thanks also to the events department who did a wonderful job organizing this evening. So with your permission, I'd like to introduce Dan Walshaw, who is the curator of the Danny Kay and Sylvia Fine collection, who will, un, who will unmask and reveal the mysteries of this website to you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Isn't it great to have so much fun in a library? <laughs> I want to start by thanking uh, Dina Kay, Ed Weidenfeld, and the Danny Kay and Sylvia Fine Foundation. Uh, their commitment to the Library of Congress shows that they are not only interested in sustaining Kay's uh, celebrity, but also in preserving a dynamic piece of history for generations to come. And through the collection, the website, and exhibition, they have opened new areas of research and scholarship. So thank you very much for, for your efforts. Are we up and running? We are not. <laughs> ah. Um, as Dina said, I'm Dan Walshaw, and I'm the curator of the Danny Kay and Sylvia Fine collection, as well as the exhibition, Danny Kay and Sylvia Fine, Two Kids from Brooklyn. When I came to this project a few years back, I was tasked with curating a digital exhibit using materials from the Kay Fine collection, and as a young go-getter, I said, of, of course I can do that, having no idea exactly what I was getting myself into. I soon realized that the 150,000 items that make up this archive was a small mountain of material, and we couldn't possibly put them all online. So after researching the collection and sifting through essentially what is Dina, Dina's parents' old stuff, uh, I selected around 2,000 artifacts to digitize that I felt gave the best representation of the amazing breadth of work that was produced by Danny and Sylvia. 
The items found on this website are informative, entertaining, and enlightening. There are stories people know, stories people do not know, and the stories behind those stories. It shows not only the beautifully uh, polished final products such as films, recordings, and shows, but it also shows the sweat, blood, and tears, and thousands of pots of black coffee that went into creating Danny Kay and Sylvia Fine. So let's take a little tour through the Danny Kay and Sylvia Fine collection through our digital presentation. So when somebody comes to the digital collection, they are immediately taken through a brief photographic history of the couple. We have images from the stage show, shows, uh, films, humanitarian events, and family occasions. To get an overview of their lives, the user can find a section of brief bibliographical information uh, sectioned into tabs with photographs from the collection. And then to explore the collection, we find the timeline. It is here that the digit digitized artifacts come to life as they are paired with their related events in history. And I'd just like to show you a few of the um, highlights of the site, um, starting with uh, a 1938 film called Cupid Takes a Holiday. This is one of Danny Kaye's first films. Um, he wasn't too happy about these films, so he wouldn't be thrilled about us showing them, but they are part of the history of what he was and what he became. And um, here we go. So clearly here is where he started to develop his many Russian accents. <laughs> um, moving ahead, uh, I want to stop at de the Decca recordings he did. He started in 1957. One of the features of the timeline is it brings together um, items from the collection that all relate to a certain topic. So in this, cer in this special event, we have the Decca recordings themselves. There are manuscripts from the Decca recording sessions. There are uh, scripts that went into the, the writing of these sessions and, and, um, and correspondence between Danny and, and various studio executives. Um, so we'll, let's hear Anatola Paris, one of my favorite songs. I've lived with these for three years, so I know all the words. <laughs> um, and if we click down to the bottom, uh, scroll down a little bit, we find the manuscripts uh, that went into the recordings. Um, and if, if we can zoom in on one of them, you'll see that the users, when they come to our website, our scans are, are very high quality. And we can zoom in quite a bit to see the work that went into uh, creating these manuscripts, the composer's hand, the arranger's hand, the conductor's hand, everybody who touched these manuscripts, and we have hundreds of them up. All right, moving ahead, similar to the Decca recordings, the Inspector General uh, event um, has a lot of materials that all correspond with each other as far as the film and, and manuscripts that went into it. So if we could take a quick peek.
Um, and similarly, we have scores and scripts from this, um, from this event. Uh, this was Sylvia Fine, this was the first film that Sylvia Fine was able to play a significant role in composing a lot of the music for. In the previous Goldwyn films that, sh that Danny uh, performed in and acted in, uh, she wrote a song here or there for, but this one she wrote a majority of the music for, so um, here we are zooming in on one of the pieces. The, the fiddle tune from, from, uh, from the, from the um, gypsy scene. All right, so moving ahead, uh, I'd like to stop at one of my personal favorites, the London Palladium in 1955. Uh, here we have a, uh, one of this, these unique parts of the collection, which we have a significant amount of home movies and, and personal recordings of, from the, uh, uh, the Danny and, and, and people collected throughout their years. Um, I'm only 29 years old, so unfortunately I never got to see Danny Kaye live, and it was said that this is where he shined the most. He was wonderful and, oh. <laughs> it's a silent film, I'll talk over it. <laughs> um, so Danny, Danny was just brilliant as a live performer. Uh, he captivated audiences and, and really drew people in, and it's, it's rare to find footage of what he was actually like on stage. And here we have a silent version of a film of him on stage at the London Palladium in 1955. I'll just take a little peek of this. Uh, loading. That's not Danny Kaye. <laughs> Even without the sound, I'm just drawn to this. It's amazing. <laughs> he looks like he's having so much fun on stage. It's just beautiful. Um, moving on, one last, one last event, uh, and it's another one of these rare videos that I would love to show you, is, is uh, the Boston Symphony in 1957 that he conducted. Uh, I have, I'm a conductor myself, so I, I'm, I'm quite jealous that this man, who couldn't read a note of music, was one of the finest conductors to ever live. Um, in 1954, he started his conducting career when he conducted the, the Philadelphia Orchestra in a benefit concert, and it exploded. The musicians loved him, the audience loved him, conductors were raving about his abilities to, to, to command respect to the orchestra, and here is, here's one of his very, very early performances in front of an orchestra. <laughs> Oh, that's, all right, you'll have to go to the website to see it yourself. <laughs> um, finally, I would like to show you one last feature of the website, and it's a works list of Sylvia Fine. Sylvia composed hundreds of songs, lyrics, and scripts, mostly ta tailored to Kay's unique talents, which she helped to perfect, but also some were written for other purposes. This, this works list is a wonderful resource for anyone who is interested in performing res or researching her great body of compositions. And if you click on any of these titles, you'll find uh, digitized forms of the music. And you're about to hear some of, the music, some of her music performed by Mr. Feinstein in just a minute. So thank you all. Thank you, Dina. Thank you, the Danny Gay and Sylvia Fine Foundation. And I invite you all to explore this website and collection. I don't know how much more I can learn about my parents. <laughs> I am delighted and privileged to introduce my friend, Michael Feinstein, who is, for this occasion, has learned some of my mother's songs and has also mastered um, the song that was not written by my mother, but by Ira Gershwin for um, Lady in the Dark, which is a play my father was in that really launched him. And I won't tell you anymore because I will let Michael stun you with it. So. Michael, will you please? Only a little pressure <laughs> following Dr. Billington and George Stevens Jr. and the congressman and Dina and a children's choir. You know, they always said never follow children. Well, here I go. <laughs> Thank you. 
the best things happen while you're dancing. Things that you would not do at home come naturally on the floor. For dancing soon becomes romancing. When you hold a girl in your arms that you've never held before. Even guys with two left feet come out all right if the girl is sweet. If by chance their cheeks should meet while dancing, proving that the best things happen when you dance. Even guys with two left feet Come out all right if the girl is sweet If by chance their cheeks should meet while dancing Proving that the best things happen while you dance The best things happen while you dance Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, quite extraordinary to me to, um, to see all that uh, Danny and Sylvia achieved. It's just, it's just an incredible experience to see what is possible in the 21st century. And um, this music, the music that Danny introduced and that Sylvia wrote, is so incredibly resonant and so important. And um, these are songs that in many cases, I have known my entire life, and I cannot imagine what the world would be like without them. When I was growing up, I discovered Danny Kaye, not in the movies, not on television, but on recordings, on some of those deck of records. My parents had 78s of a number of them, and I learned uh, as many of them as I could. And I would like to try and um, recreate for you one of the songs that that Danny sang. It was written by Howard Dietz and Arthur Schwartz, and I think it's appropriate because the Arthur Schwartz collection is also here in the library. So this is uh, a totally Jewish experience. <laughs> I can't do this too fast, not as fast as Danny did it. <laughs> Three little unexpected children simultaneously the doctor brought us and you can see that we'll be three forever in a e i o you wouldn't know how agonizing being triple could be each one is individually the victim of that clinical day e i o every summer we go away to baden 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 every winter we come back home to walla 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 we do everything alike we look alike we dress alike, we walk alike, we talk alike, and what is more, we hate each other very much. We hate our folks, we're sick of jokes on what an art it is to tell us apart. If one of us gets the measles, another one gets the measles, then all of us gets the measles, and this and Oh, I wish I had a gun, a little gun. It would be fun to shoot the other two and be only one. And Poofer loves to talk to Mrs. Hildendorfer of the fatal natal day she had her silly willy. Mrs. Hassan Cooper loves to talk to Mrs. Golden Wasser of her major operation when she had her twins. But when mother comes along, she silences the others. She accomplished something that is very rare in mothers. MGM has got a trio, but mama has got a trio. She is proud, but says three is a crowd. Do everything alike, we look alike. We dress alike, we walk alike, we talk alike, and what is more, we hate each other very much. We hate our folks, we're sick of jokes on what an art it is to tell us apart. We eat the same kind of vittles, we drink the same kind of bottles, we sit in the same kind of high chair, high chair, high chair. Oh, how I wish I had a gun, a little gun, it would be fun to shoot the other two and be only one.
now an example of this extraordinary website that Dan has created. I have downloaded from the website a song by Sylvia Fine that I'm going to sing for you. And uh, this is a song that Irving Berlin described as being a perfect love song. Uh, Sylvia wrote both music and lyrics brilliantly. She was the most extraordinary composer, and I think one of the great gifts of this website is that people will really be able to get to know her work uh, much, much better. Uh, Danny once said in describing Sylvia and their collaboration, he said, Sylvia has a fine head on my shoulders. <laughs> this song was written in 1953. I never dream, but I've been dreaming lately all about you. Whatever I do, my thoughts are all about you. You're so caressable, so unguessable, so sweet and blessable too. That I'm in a spin because of inaccessible you. What can I do? The friends I call that I've been calling lately, I call about you. And not just a few, I want to tell them all about you. Is it un? or conceivable you care at all about me do you want my arms as I do all about you You care at all about me Do you want my arms as I do All about you Thank you very much you can also download this. Okay, now comes the, uh, for me, the piece de resistance. This is the number that I think is certainly one of the most significant and important numbers of Danny Kaye's early career. It's the uh, song that really, uh, in many ways, put him on the map. He had done a previous Broadway show, but when he starred in Lady in the Dark, uh, he performed a number that was expressly written for him by Ira Gershwin and Kurt Weill, who wrote the score of the show. Uh, when Danny auditioned, he sang a piece that uh, Dina's mother wrote called Pavlova. And Ira took the cue from that idea for Pavlova and uh, decided to create a piece that uh, would sort of echo the idea in which she took all of these um, names of Russian dancers and, and created this number. And Ira had the idea to take the names of Russian composers and do the same thing. Now, of course, Danny stopped the show with the piece and it catapulted him to a level of stardom from which he never looked back. And since he has sung this piece, no one has ever had the nerve to try and sing it as he... I mean, it's, it's impossible. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to... I don't know what the equivalent of the, of the, Jew, the Jewish star off instead of a you know, thing. Uh, but I thought that I would uh, have as much fortification as I can by making sure that I had an authentic Russian pianist as my company. It's ladies and gentlemen, Alex Hassan. Hassanovich. <laughs> Are you ready? I want you should start playing, yes. <laughs> I think. Show off. <laughs> Without the least excuse or the slightest provocation, may I fondly introduce for your mental delectation 
The names that always give me brain concussion. The names of those composers known as Russian. There's Malachevsky, Rubinstein, Orensky, and Tchaikovsky, Sapelnikov, Dmitriev, Chirep, and Krijanovsky, Godovsky, Artibuchev, Monayusko, Akimenko, Solovyov, Prokofiev, Tiamkin, Koroschenko, there's Glinka, Winkler, Botanyansky, Rebekov, Ilyinsky, there's Medner, Belakirov, Zolotarov, and Kovjinsky, there's Sokolov, and Kokolov, Dukelsky, and Klanovsky, Shostakovich, Borodin, Glier, and Nowakovsky, there's Lyadov, and Karganov, Markievich, Penchenko, Darogomitsky, Cherpachev, Skriabin, Vasilenko, Zorvitsky, Rimsky, Korsakov, Mussorgsky, and Machaninov, and Glazanov, and Caesar, Kweek, Kalinikov, Rachmaninov, Stravinsky, and Grachanov. I really have to stop the subject has been well upon enough. Stravinsky, Stravinsky, Grachanov, Rimshinsky, Rachmaninov. I really have to stop because you all have under cut enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I'm sure I left something out, but who the hell's gonna know, right? Okay, to tie all of this up, a very gentle song from Hans Christian Andersen that I think is very descriptive of the human condition. I thank you very much for allowing me to be, allowing me to be a part of this celebration and long, May the memory of Danny and Sylvia Kay thrive and survive, and it will, thanks to the blessings of the Library of Congress. <laughs> Her eyes were fire bright And then I knew what my path must be Through the ever-haunted night Anywhere I wander Anywhere I roam Till I'm in the arms of my darling again my heart will find no home Anywhere I wander Anywhere I roam Her tears were silver as the morning dew As she bade me goodbye And every tear was a promise true that her love would never die. So anywhere I wander, anywhere I roam, till I'm in the arms of my darling again, my heart will find A super special personal thank you for me. You didn't make one mistake in that song. What's amazing about you is that you can do the ballads and the funny things, and it was just a perfect coda to the evening. Thank you so much. Again, thank you very much for coming. E-I-O, every summer we go away to Baden, Baden, Baden. Every winter we come back home to Walla, Walla, Walla. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. 
visit us at loc.gov.